The hope now is that over the next two weeks, this stadium will witness landmarks in sport, moments of history. But what does it really take to get here? Well, Tasha knows her insight on what an athlete must do and do without to become an Olympian. This is the Olympic Village, home to the thousands of sports people who are competing at the Games. I stayed in two of these as an athlete and I know how hard it is to make it here. I suffered from injuries and was often separated from my son as I concentrated on my career. To become an Olympic athlete means overcoming plenty of hurdles. Many of them have made huge sacrifices to get this far. In some cases they have endured financial hardship and for others fear of failure at a home games will be playing on their minds. There will be many sleepless nights but the question is how will they cope and what help is on offer at this most crucial point in their professional lives. When my dad died in February I honestly didn't know if I was gonna come back you know and train for the Olympics and carry on and you know at least attempt to make the team. Annika Anora will run in the sprints at the Olympics despite the death of her father earlier this year. But she missed his funeral in Nigeria because her family agreed she needed to go to a crucial training camp instead. It was hard for me, that was a hard decision because you think one of them moments you're never going to get back, you don't know what's going to happen afterwards and you don't, to be honest there's no guarantees and because there's no guarantees in the year you think oh imagine I'm missing his burial and I potentially not make the team. So there was a lot of pressure on top of that in order to get to where I am. But, you know, thankfully, everything's worked out OK. Charles Van Comeny has the job of preparing the British athletics team, including their mental states. And that's where we have a sports psychologists and sometimes even clinical psychiatrists. Because sometimes I mean, athletes are human beings, you know. Uh, I mean, sometimes they have problems and they also sometimes don't want to share it with the coach. So you need somebody else. Athletes, like everyone else, have to earn money. Conrad Williams hopes to win a medal at the 400 metres, but financially, he's just like many other people. What would you say the average athlete is earning? Probably next to nothing. I don't think they don't really earn much. Um, the most, I mean, as far as we're concerned, you know, if you don't go abroad and get the, um, the races, maybe in Germany or Switzerland, and pick up a couple of euros here and there, um, it's pretty much break even when you do go abroad. Even for top athletes, life is not easy. Christine Ahurugu is a reigning Olympic champion, but her coach knows that brings its own problems. I think it's the external pressure with people and friends wanting her to do well, and the extra pressure she puts on herself as well. But for me, it's just to get her to just chill and relax, you know. I've just got to de sort of desensitise it a little way where don't make it the most important thing, just do the things with no pressure, just run freely. For every athlete who wins gold at the Olympics, there will be some who fail to perform at their very best. And despite the help that their coaches and governing bodies can give, it's worth remembering that in the end, athletes are just human beings after all. Tasha, a really moving piece there. You spoke at the beginning about your son, the sacrifice you made. How did you deal with the guilt of being that sort of working mother who had to focus on, on her goals? You know, you, you just decide that there's this goal that you want to achieve and you, you're doing it because you want to better your life and your child's life and that's kind of the reason why you do the things you do. But He, he was three then, he's a lot older now, he's yes. seven. Does he appreciate that mum's got a medal? Yes, he does and he always refers it to, uh, to it as a gold medal so I don't really correct him on that. Brilliant, it's okay. shiny, that's fine. Absolutely. And we saw the athlete there, Annika, who missed her father's funeral. Describe to me somebody who isn't an athlete, how the obsession and the drive lead you to make that very, very difficult decision? You know, it's difficult because you're balancing a once-in-a-lifetime uh, time, you know, opportunity with another once-in-a-lifetime. She'll mm. never get to go to that again. And people have that this misconception of athletics that it only happens in an Olympic year. But athletes make many, many sacrifices during their career just to achieve this one goal. They'll miss funerals, they'll miss uh, the birth of their children, mm. they'll spend time apart. It's very, very difficult. Coaches and even psychiatrists are lined up to help with people who don't make it over there, who, who lose in the next fortnight.
how do you cope with that? It's, it's something you have to almost prepare yourself for mentally, but at the same time you don't want to invite that thought into your mind because mm. all you want to do is achieve your best and by bringing that negative thought in you're worried that it could crash you. So it's really just making sure that before you go into any games you have a great support team around you. Tasha, you're back here for the opening ceremony tomorrow. The first one you've actually attended. Yes. We'll speak to you then. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. so much. Well, that's all we've got time for tonight.